people actually it is necessary to understand at the outset today the world is going through turbulence like just before the first world war or just before the second world war nobody knows whether we are heading for a third world war and if that third world war if at all it comes whether it will be nuclear or conventional but the point is the threat of war does exist nuclear or conventional and it is quite global it appeared during the cold war that there was a balance of power and the war was unlikely third world war could be avoided because there were two superpowers almost equally balanced but the world has changed in last about 50 years the world has radically changed and the first and the second world war the theater was europe now for the first time even asia is coming in the war zone it is because of china's expansionism pakistan's intolerance india's aggressive hindutva and so many other factors which are troubling the south asia particularly and asia in general has created a situation not only of turbulence but enormous amount of tension therefore it is urgently necessary that we maintain peace and that peace can be achieved only if the people of the continent people of the entire asian continent realize that the threat today is more than in europe and only in asia we have to be tolerant towards each other we have to be negotiating things if there are conflicts instead of that what we are seeing is everybody asserting his identitarian position in india there is a wave of hindutva and a hate for pakistan and muslims which can create a situation like civil war between hindus and muslims and between various federal states and the center i don't think this is an imaginary situation it is a distinct possibility that india could head for balkanization of the south asian systems and therefore just as in pakistan there are tensions between baluchistan and pakistan and sindh and pakistan center similarly in india there are tensions in between various states now so there is a two fold question one is within india and second is within asia now asia and again within asia within south asia so asian peace effort is most necessary because almost nearly 65% of the population lives only in the asian subcontinent and asia in general and therefore if the war does happen it will be annihilation of a very large population and mankind and therefore not only europe we should be of course worried about russia and ukraine we should of course be worried about afghanistan and america but afghanistan is part of asia and america is outside afghanistan outside asia therefore it is necessary that asians come together to maintain peace to take initiative for the peace because the world war was fashioned in europe but the neo colonial countries were trying to impose their system their philosophy their thoughts on asia and that's why asia came in trouble we have to recognize that the interests of the west will be protected promote, promoted and propagated if asia has conflict the majority of the military industrial complex is in the west and majority of the consumers of the armaments are in the asian subcontinent or asia and therefore asia has more responsibility of taking arms and not taking arms and using arms and not using arms it is entirely up to the asian countries asian countries today have maximum number of weapons and those weapons can destroy not only asia but the whole world i don't understand why military industrial complex does not understand the threat that if the war really develops it will also destroy much of europe because europe cannot be completely isolated from the nuclear weapons even if the nuclear war takes place between say india and pakistan i think it is necessary just like israel now israel arab countries are part of africa but iran is part of asia and israel palestine also are in trouble so the conflict between israel and palestine conflict between iran and uh, middle eastern countries conflict between india and pakistan are the tension points and these tension points can actually engulf the whole world and therefore it is urgently necessary that humanism prevails and humanist ideology has lots of roots in india and in asia in general because of the buddhist foundation because of gandhian philosophy but unfortunately 
neither the Gandhian philosophy has been able to stop the Hindutva movement, nor the Buddhist philosophy has been able to stall the process of war in the rest of Asia, where majority of the countries were Buddhist, whether it is China, Japan, Vietnam, Cambodia, and so on and so forth. So it is necessary to revive those philosophies of the past, of Buddhism on the one hand, and Gandhism of the recent kind, to reunite the Asian population. It is not as if the Asian population was always united or integrated, but it is time for us, if this century is supposed to be there, a peaceful century. It is about nearly 78 years remain for the end of the century. There are pessimistic people, or you can say doomsday people, who say that this is going to be the final century. We have to defeat those pessimists. We have to defeat those doomsday theorists and take a lead in the world to maintain peace, Asia perhaps can lead the world in organizing peace, maintaining peace, and creating peace, and creating a proper atmosphere for the next century. But for that, we as people have to learn. We as people have to learn, not just the governments, not just the systems, but the people must bring pressure on the respective authorities to maintain peace and promote the idea of peace and philosophy and tranquility. Thank you very much.